So tonight, parts of Indonesia look more like a landfill site strewn with wreckage and garbage than a place where people lived and worked. The sheer destruction is horrifying on its own. The death toll, though, is surging. The estimates went from dozens dead on Friday night to more than 800 confirmed today. Take a look at what happened here. As a massive wave bore down on the coastal city of Palu, people reacted in terror. It was triggered by a 7.5 magnitude earthquake that struck north of Palu, close to Dongala, a region of about 300,000 people that has been cut off ever since. For now, most confirmed casualties are in Palu. <laughs> On Saturday, women just wept in the streets after an aftershock made those frayed nerves much worse. With the local airport closed yesterday, relief workers had to make their way by road from the next nearest airport. That's about a 12-hour drive away. All those roads are lined with body bags, and officials say at least 17,000 people have been left homeless. A tsunami early warning system has been in development there for years with the help of international funding. But when a powerful earthquake hit in 2016, it was discovered that the 22 underwater sensors just didn't work, either because of vandalism or poor maintenance. Renee Filippone watches developing stories for us on Sunday night. So, Renee, uh, what is the latest on these recovery efforts? Well, Adrian, it's early Monday morning in Indonesia, and the search is getting underway for yet another day. Right now, the death toll sits at 832, but it almost certainly will grow. Officials on the ground fear thousands are dead, partly because no one knows how many people are still trapped. Now, new heavy equipment has arrived to help lift debris and get to those people who are trapped. <laughs> it's believed hundreds are buried in just one residential complex that collapsed. So three days after the earthquake, rescuers say they can still hear their voices. Now, the effort is particularly challenging because the hardest hit areas are tough to access. Roads and bridges were washed out. The airport was also damaged. It is now back open, but only for emergency crews. So it's now a race against the clock for the teams on the ground. The main thing is about health issues because the risk of, uh, they are living under the tent, uh, open space, uh, open air. And this is uh, make them prone to the uh, disease also mosquitoes and open on open space uh, make them uh, vulnerable to the sickness. Now there is a desperate need in the area now for food, water, health care. The sad reality is that with so many dead in this remote and inaccessible area, crews are now digging mass graves in order to prevent the spread of illness. Adrian? Okay, Renee, thanks very much.